This is the brand new Garmin Instinct 3. But so is this, also the brand new Garmin Instinct 3. In fact, all of these are also the brand new Garmin Instinct 3. It is not just one models or two models, but a slate of different models in now different display types, different sizes, you name it. There's even a cheaper option called the Instinct E, which we will not even begin to dive into today. Instead, I'm gonna focus on what's new in the Instinct 3 compared to the Instinct 2 and the 2X. It is as simple as that. However, this is not an in-depth review. This is my first look, hands-on look at things. Expect a full in-depth review down the road here once I've basically beaten the crap out of these watches and see if they live up to Garmin's claims because sometimes that doesn't happen. That's what, that's what testing is for, right? So with that, let's just get straight into it. So the very first thing to know is there's now two display types. There is AMOLED and then there is MIP. Uh, MIP is the same as it was in the past, a monochrome display, uh, but now it has built-in solar in every model. In the past, you had to choose between solar and non-solar. Now all MIP-based displays are solar in the Instinct 3 series. Versus you also have the AMOLED edition. So the same kind of ruggedized case design, except now with an AMOLED display inside of it. This of course makes complete sense because it's exactly what Garmin's been doing for their Forerunner and Phoenix series and their Vivo series and every other watch series they have, splitting it between basically an AMOLED side and a MIP-based side, at least until the, the MIP-based side goes away. But that's not gonna be for a long time for the Instinct versus like the Forerunners, that, that sunset has already happened. Now, of course, if you're not familiar with the two basic display types, a mid-based display essentially has a heck of a lot longer battery life because it burns a lot less battery. It's got just one color, it's just black and, and white or white and black. However you want to describe that, that is a mid-based display. Versus an AMOLED display is a very brilliant, colorful display, uh, but of course it burns through more battery life. In terms of things like visibility in the sun and all that kind of goodness, uh, there's no meaningful difference in this day and age with today's AMOLED displays, or just simply isn't. Uh, inversely though, with mid-based displays, they can be harder to view in darker conditions if there's no backlight turned on. Uh, but once you turn the backlight on, it's just fine. That AMOLED display also comes a larger display size, 1.2 and 1.3 inches for the AMOLED editions, compared to 0.9 and 1.1 inches for the MIP-based display. But you'll note though that in the case of the AMOLED display, they've got rid of that little like circle thing in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, that's a secondary display, if you will, that exists on the solar editions. However, that little circle thing lives on uh, in the AMOLED in spirit in a lot of the menus. As you scroll through different menus, you'll see that. But in the workout pages, you get the full like range of the display with normal data page styling and things like that. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, just simply watch it all the way through. That is frankly the only thing the YouTube gods care about these days, and it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, while the AMOLED edition got the bigger display, the solar edition got the bigger battery. Uh, Garmin claims that up to five times the battery performance of the Instinct 2 series with the Instinct 3 series, which is a mind-boggling claim there. They basically increase the number of unlimited battery uh, categories on the battery chart. Here's the, the battery chart right there. If we compare side by side between the 2X and the 3 on the right hand side there, you'll notice that reddish color of the 2X solar panel uh, is now gone. Instead, it's just that black color. They introduce the same concept on the uh, Phoenix 8 series, basically makes it so it doesn't look like there's a solar ring anymore. And in turn, it gets you just a crap ton more solar. Now, of course, as I mentioned, I've still got to put these things to the test when it comes to those solar claims or any battery claims for that matter. I've got some silly, stupid, adventures plan basically one of these on each wrist uh, out for a long long time to see how they hold up from a battery standpoint next up from a styling standpoint you'll notice the instinct 3 adds a metal bezel reinforcement like a metal ring that kind of goes around the outside inside edge there whatever you want to call that uh, they call it the bezel reinforcement i don't know why you need to reinforce this very hardened ruggedized bezel but hey it is now reinforced there uh, now the instinct 2x did have a flashlight on the front uh, but not the smaller instinct series now all the instinct 3 units will small and large have that flashlight. Uh, with the flashlight, you just simply double tap the upper left hand button there for a second. It turns on the flashlight. As you can see right there, there's both a white and a red color option. There's actually four levels of white brightness and then one uh, red brightness level. It's one of those features that sounds like super inspector gadgety, but in real life, everyone loves it. It's just practical. If you're in a hotel in the middle of the night getting around, or if you've got little kids in the middle of the night, or you're in a tent in the middle of the night, just to have that on your wrist, a quick double tap and boom, a legit LED flashlight as opposed to like a screen based one. The next hardware feature that is on the Instinct 3 is multi band or dual frequency GPS. While well, Garmin introduced multi band or dual frequency GPS in the uh, Instinct 2X series, it was not in the base Instinct 2 series. And then further, there was not satellite IQ or sat IQ, uh, which is also called auto select. That is now in the Instinct 3, uh, which is super useful. What that tech
technology does is basically if you're out in like a big field, it reduces the power to essentially to the GPS. And then if you're in the mountains, it increases the power. And it does that constantly, like on a per second basis uh, to go ahead and adapt to whatever the environment is around you based on the signal strength. It is arguably one of the most impressive Garmin technologies out there once you start using it to realize how much extra battery you get when you don't have complex like GPS tree mountain stuff around you and then to scale up as soon as you do. Now, on the flip side, literally the flip side, the biggest disappointment on this unit, well, there's a few, but this is the first one. Uh, they use the older Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor, Garmin's Elevate Gen 4 optical heart rate sensor. I don't understand why they did that. The Gen 5 has been out for like, I don't know, a year or something like that, year and a half now. Uh, and the Gen 5 notably has ECG as well as wrist-based uh, skin temperature. And that is not going to happen with this sensor. So that's a pretty big disappointment to not have ECG capability in a $500 watch. Now, speaking of which, I don't think we ever talked about the pricing. There's the, the pricing on the screen right there, uh, different models. And then you've also got the Phoenix E pricing listed there as well. The Phoenix E is positioned as like this in-between weirdness um, where it's cheaper than the Phoenix 3, kind of in the same ballpark as the Phoenix 2 but with more features in the, I'm gonna have to do a whole separate video on that because just decoding the chart they sent me uh, like gives me lots and lots of questions. Next up, we've got a whole bunch of features from the Phoenix series that have now entered into the Instinct series. I'm just gonna simply show them right there. Uh, I'm gonna read them off to you just so you know. Uh, they are number one, the hill score has been added. Number two, endurance score has been added. Training load focus and training load ratio has been added. Uh, Multi-sport triathlon auto transition. So they've had multi-sport and triathlon mode, of course, in the past, but this is auto transition, meaning you don't press any buttons, you just finish swimming and it automatically figures out you've done swimming and goes to biking and running and so on. So that's cool to have. Uh, nap detection, sleep coach, uh, muscle map for strength workouts, as well as the strength workout animation. So those last two are just for AMOLED only. Uh, they've also added Garmin Share that allows you to share basically courses just directly between the watches. Uh, say you're out in the woods and you want to share a route or a course or whatever it may be, you can do that directly between the two watches without any phone whatsoever involved. They've also added the Garmin Messenger app. Uh, that allows you to basically send messages from the watch itself, uh, assuming you have a phone involved. There's no like built-in cellular or anything like that into this, no satellite built into this or anything like that. So you have to have your phone nearby, but you can do that from the watch itself. They've also added the large font mode option. So if you've got older eyes and maybe want a bigger font size, that's now an option. And then finally, they've made Garmin Pay standard across the board on all of these units. So in the past, it was just the solar units that had it. Uh, now Garmin Pay, their contactless payment is on everything. Oh, nay, I just dropped them all. Uh, but you know, that's a good time to talk about disappointment. And probably the biggest disappointment here is the lack of maps. At 500 bucks, the lack of maps is borderline inexcusable. Um, I don't understand that. Their competitors have that at half that price point. Uh, we have the Amazfit T-Rex 3. My review just went up for that yesterday with maps at uh, 234. Uh, you've got Coros and Suunto and Polar with maps in the low 300s. You've got Apple and Google with maps in the 200s, depending on which model you want. There should be maps on a watch like this at this price point designed for the outdoors and adventure. Like I could almost see if Apple was like, no Apple Watch SE gets maps, but this is designed to go a long, long ways in the mountains with, with no maps, especially with the AMLA display. Like that's the point is to have that display to do amazing things and not have maps. And in case you're wondering from a storage standpoint, it doesn't have that much storage either. So uh, you either have to re-architect their maps, which they certainly could do. Uh, you see, for example, Amazfit and Koros uh, doing really small map areas. They could put that on something like this without any real issues uh, for certain areas. I guess ultimately they want you to spend money on the Phoenix series or a 4Runner series, uh, which I get, but some of those devices are the same price as this. After all, you get the Epix uh, Gen 2 for $399 right now, which is basically the same price, if not cheaper than some of these models. And that has full mapping and AMOLED display and all that kind of stuff with very similar battery life to the AMOLED of this. So if I rant down, I'm gonna pick up my mess and get back to my summary. Okay, there you go, a complete first hands-on look at the new Garmin Instinct 3 Series. Uh, a lot of these changes are largely to be expected. I mean, Garmin is very, very predictable when it comes to how they handle uh, mid-tier and lower-tier devices. They simply take features from their upper-tier devices and roll them down about a year to two years later. And that is precisely what they've done here with almost every single one of these features, not almost, with every single one of these features coming from their Phoenix series down into the Instinct, which is essentially half the price. So the stay tuned for my full in-depth review while I put these things through their paces. And I'm not just talking like a single 5K or 10K run around the block and calling it done like some reviewers do. I'm talking a legit like beating the crap out of myself and these watches to see just if they actually meet the claim. Because if you're gonna spend money on a ruggedized device like this, which has so-called unlimited power and unlimited battery, I wanna find out if it actually does. So with that, definitely hit the like and subscribe button down there for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.